a disgraced Ohio pastor who, well, got himself in trouble with spiritual abuse, bullying, sin patterns. Well, of course, didn't just go quietly into the night. No, he has now been named the brand new campus pastor for a Florida church. We're going to get into all the details of this, guys, in less than 10 seconds. First, if you could, if YT lets you, try and hit that like button for me. Very important. Also, you please share the video. Help us get around the algorithms. Hit the bell, subscribe, or the glasses because I'm blind. And as always, guys, if you could help donate here to our ministry, help support what I do, please see more info in the description. Let's talk about Pastor Tim Armstrong. Tim Armstrong, somebody who was pastor of the Chapel Church in Akron, Ohio. He was dismissed, removed, told to get out back in August of 2021. This was due to the fact that there was an independent investigation that was looked into by Armstrong after several complaints were being made by leadership there at the time that Armstrong was you know, participating in patterns of spiritual abuse, harsh leadership styles. And eventually what they came to in the report were patterns of sin. Sound familiar, doesn't it? Right, with a lot of these mega church pastors. So Armstrong was removed from that church. And I, I, I want to stress this here because never at any point but especially within the last year has armstrong ever come out and admitted any wrongdoing nor has he apologized for how he treated any of his staff at the chapel in akron ohio and once these pastors are removed from one church we usually see them pop up in another that's exactly what we saw here with armstrong and it was a couple of months ago that he had resurfaced at Bell Shoals Church in Florida. Now, this is a 6,000, you know, member church, you know, big mega church there, multi-campuses, okay? And originally, he just appeared as a guest preacher. And I had done a video about this at the time because I said to myself, okay, well, what does this mean? Where is this leading? Is this just a one-time thing? Why is Bell Shoals having him here in the first place. Do they not know about the spiritual abuse that occurred with him at his previous church, or do they just not care? Well, apparently they don't care because his role is now being expanded in an announcement that was made by Bell Shoals Senior Pastor Corey Abney. I'll get into all of that here, guys, in a second. First, let me put a quick plug in for my Patreon. Guys, I got to do this. I get no monetization on this channel. It's the only way I have to let you guys know how you can help support me. Plus, if you guys only watch these videos through YT Alerts, you miss a ton of content because they don't send my notifications out for all the videos. So sign up on Patreon. You'll be alerted for all my content. Not only that, but you can leave your comments on these videos completely censorship free. You guys ask me all the time. You say it. I can't see the comments. YT is removing my stuff. You don't got to worry about it if you sign up on Patreon. We can have a free-flowing discussion over there. Say whatever you want. Nothing's going to get taken down. Also, you can send me direct messages there. And hey, if you prefer to help donate to the ministry through PayPal, you can do that as well. I appreciate all of your support. Again, the links are down below. Big, big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So Armstrong had been serving as the transitional pastor for Bell Shoals over at the Riverview campus. But things were about to change. That title, Transitional, was about to change. In a video announcement that was made during the September 11th service, Corey Abney said that there were some changes coming to Riverview. And that by the end of September, well, the Riverview campus would in fact be shutting down not for good, but temporarily, as the church begins to look for a new facility for this particular campus. And the reason for that, according to Abney, is the fact that the rent is going way up if they were to renew. He also said that they don't have the ability to expand there, to grow anymore. 
and they want to get a facility that's closer to areas there within Riverview that are more rapid growth development areas. Where they're at currently, he said that's just not the case. So for them, they don't see the, the need in spending additional money if they can't get more people into the building. Now, whether or not that's true or not, this is what he is saying. So operations are gonna be halted here for about the next six months. However, with that, Tim Armstrong will be moving from transitional pastor to the brand new head campus pastor. No more transitional role here. He will take over full time campus pastor of what will be the newly relaunched Riverview site. And that will be on April 9th, 2023, which also happens to be Easter Sunday. Now, you know, how they're gearing up for this exactly and why they think they're going to be in a new building, you know, six months from now, that I don't know. But they apparently think that they're going to have a building in a place by that point. And when he went on to describe what a leader looks like to be the pastor of a brand new campus, to describe somebody with wisdom and intelligence and experience to lead, and that person is none other than Tim Armstrong. Never mind the fact that he bullied his entire last staff, spiritually abused them, among many other things. And the man is unrepentant. He refused to acknowledge any of his wrongdoing. Yet, this is the guy that you want to install as the new campus pastor here? Give me a break. Or could it just be, ladies and gentlemen, the birds of a feather, they flock together. And that they really don't care so much about what Armstrong did at his past church. They value the fact that he has experience with church planting. Never mind who he's hurt, that doesn't matter. It's about protecting the power that they have there in the pulpit. Being bullies, right? Pushing staff around, congregants around, making people sign NDAs, all that stuff that they love to do so much. They turn a blind eye to everything else. They don't care if there's investigation. You would think if there was an investigation into somebody, the last person that would be hired for a job would be that pastor. Same could be said for Andy Wood over at Saddleback Church now, taking over for Rick Warren. I've talked about that story numerous times. They didn't care about that though. They cleared him of any wrongdoing at all. But this report actually said that Armstrong was in fact guilty of these things. The situation with Saddleback's a little different. They just swept that all under the rug and said they couldn't find anything that had, you know, any sort of abusive behavior about Andy Wood. This one in the report outright says spiritual abuse, harsh leadership, and patterns of sin. <laughs> Yet Bell Shoals turns a blind eye to it. They don't want to hear nothing about that. No, 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 no. They have been asked to comment on this. You got to understand this. They've been asked to comment on this numerous times. And they refuse to do so. They do not want to mention anything that he did over at the chapel in Ohio. Nothing like that at all. Why now? Why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? They don't want to bring any attention to this. I'm talking about this because, well, I want people to be aware. If you attend Bell Shoals, and I know they got their own issues, okay? I won't go into all that. You need to know who these pastors are before you start attending their churches. Because you may think twice before going there and thinking that you want to, you know, begin to get in covenant with these types of people. You know, he's going to form a new, uh, you know, a new staff around him. That being Tim Armstrong. Guess what's going to happen? The same thing that happened in his last church at the chapel in Ohio. The abuse patterns, all of it, just like these Mark Driscoll's and all these guys. They're all the same. They don't change. They don't admit fault. They can't stay away. They get dismissed from one church. They go to another. With Driscoll, it was Mars Hill. He went from Mars Hill to the Trinity Church in Arizona. Same deal. They're all very similar in what they do. Corey Abney also said that they plan on basically relaunching like another five churches, another five campuses in addition to Riverview. Uh, they're not. That's not going to be the only one. So there's more to come, and they're planning on doing that here within the next seven years. So... Look, 
Some can look at that as a good thing, but look, when you're going to put these deceptive pastors behind the pulpits, it's not so much a good thing. It's a problem. All this is uh, are, are new buildings for more potential abuse to occur and more false, false gospel being spread. I'll leave it there. I'll put some more information on this for you guys down below here in the description. You can let me know your thoughts. I'm not done just yet, though. I don't leave any video without giving people the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That's what this is all about, getting people to Christ in these last days. If that's you, if you're watching right now, you're someone that has not yet accepted Christ in their life, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. It's a prayer you can do in your own words, but I will give you the steps that you need to bring it before the Lord today. The first thing that you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. But the good news is this. God gave his only son, Jesus Christ. He died on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from your sin. Not just to say you're sorry and then you just jump right back in your old lifestyles again. No means to turn from sin, lifestyles, habits, patterns, things in your life that are not of the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and you ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. I will have more on this down below. You guys can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.